right, let's hop right into this video. First of all, why y'all outside making all that noise? Child, I need to close this window. But first, let's hop into this video. So today's video is a little bit more on the simpler side. We are doing um, a nice cover pink set. So I'm going in with my mandrel bit with my e-file with a fine sanding band and I'm gonna go ahead and edge up her nails today video is a little bit more on the simpler side because I wanted to show y'all an in-depth video of just my application because I know I get a lot of comments a lot of comments um, of y'all saying that y'all love my application so I just wanted to show y'all a pure video of just application only no designs no extra detailing no nothing just pure acrylic application file buffed and top coat Next up, I'm putting my nail tips on. I'm using the BT Art tips from Amazon. I love these tips, they're my favorite tips. I've been using these tips since I first started doing nails. They're my OG tips, so yeah. And I put my tips on like this because I find it easier to like put them on this way because you can see what finger is crooked and what finger is not and how you should adjust the tip to make sure the tip isn't being glued on crooked. Because just because the finger is crooked, that doesn't mean that the tip has to be put on crooked. So, yeah. That's a real huge pet peeve of mine. I hate a crooked tip. Just because the finger is crooked doesn't mean the tip has to be crooked. Like, no. Adjust the tip the right way and the nail will look straight. It's called Illusion Bookie, okay? So today my client is getting a nice little medium length nail, um, real simple, real basic. I'm taking my scissors, I got these off Amazon, girl I'll be getting everything from Amazon. Taking my little scissors that I got off of Amazon, we're going to cut her down to a nice little medium length, nothing too shabby, you know, and I like to make sure that they are crispy and they're aligned. So the way I measure my tips. I like to make sure that the middle finger is just a tad bit longer than the ring finger and I like to make sure that the ring finger and the index finger are exactly the same size. I try to make sure they're the same size. If they're off a little bit, it's okay. But yeah. So once I've cut them to my desired length, I like to go ahead and match them up on each hand finger to finger to make sure they're equal to each other and the way I measure it I measure mine I match them up at the cuticle area I know some people match them at the knuckle area but I feel like it make more sense to match them at the cuticle area and that's because nail bits can be shorter and longer on each hand so if you match each nail at the cuticle area they'll be the same length Now I'm going to pre-shape my nails. I'm using my 8080 grit e-file, not e-file, my 8080 grit hand file that I got from Amazon. I like to use the zebra, print, the zebra print files because I don't like black files. I feel like black files are messy and I feel like when you hand file with black files, the little black particles get everywhere and I feel like it could get in your acrylic application. I don't know. Either way, I don't like acrylic files. Ever since I started doing nails, I've always used the zebra print. That's like my go-to. I'm not knocking anybody who likes black files, but I feel like the zebra print print files work a thousand times better. And they're not all crusty and getting everywhere. So, yeah. And I always use 8080 grit. That is the grit that I've always used. I find it that it is, um, it gets a nice crispy shape, you know? You feel me? I've heard people using 6060 grip before. I've used 6060 grip before. Uh, it's okay. I'm, I, it's, it's very um, tough, 
but I just prefer 8080 grit. Plus it's more common to come across 8080 grit than it is to come across 6060 grit. And if you're ever confused on how to understand the grits of the different hand files, just remember that the lower the number, the more grit you'll have. So it'll, it'll make the nails more sharper. And the higher the number, the less grit there is. So it's a softer file. Now I'm taking my sanding van and I'm just going to blend the fake tip in with the natural nail because I like to have a smooth seam that way when I'm laying my acrylic it's not in the way like a like a bulky little layer so I just take my e file and blend the natural tip blend the, the nail tip in with the natural nail okay y'all so next up we're gonna get into our acrylic application so I like to prime as I go. Now I see people, they'll prime all 10 fingers and then lay their acrylic. Me personally, I like to prime as I go because I find it to be that the um, my retention is better when I do it that way. So I've always done it this way since I started doing nails. I just prime as I go. I use the Beauty Strike Acid Primer. Now I know y'all probably looking at my previous videos and looking at the description box and y'all probably see that I never put a link for the Beauty Strike Acid Primer and that is because I cannot find it anywhere online. Now they do have the Beauty Strike Acid Free Primer online but the Beauty Strike Acid Primer they don't have it online I don't know why so yeah I never have a link for it but I use the Beauty Strike Acid Primer that I get from my local nail supply store. I go to Lanami if you live in Chicago you know where Lanami is if not it's up north off of Broadway uh, Street. I think it's Broadway Street or Broadway Avenue. I'm not sure. But it's up north. Um, that is the only primer that I use. You get more bang for your buck. I think I got like an 8 ounce for like $20 or something like that. It's a lot of primer. So I just, um, we have been using that. That's all I use. The only primer that I use. People typically ask me, do I dehydrate? No, I don't. I never used dehydrator before. I never cared to because I've been doing my application like just with primer for the longest and I've never had any complaints. So yeah. Should I am I saying you shouldn't use dehydrator? That's on you, Buki. But me personally, I don't. Anyway, let's get into this acrylic application. So I am using the Valentino Acrylic Kalinsky brush in the size 12. That is the only size brush I use. Very convenient. Um, and I'm using my cover paint by Young Nails, and I'm using Young Nails Monomer. Definitely recommend Young Nails for beginners. It's very fluent, very buttery, very chef's kiss. It is my number one go-to acrylic line, period. I love Young Nails. It gets, it gets the job done. But as you can see, I am really getting up in that cuticle area, and I'm blending that bead down. I'm going to walk y'all step by step on the next finger. Just wait for me to get there. Hold up, y'all. Okay, so let's get into it. First, we're going to prime because like I said, I like to prime as I go. Then I'm going to pick up my acrylic brush. I'm going to tap some of the excess monomer off. I'm going to pick up a bead, and I like to do the, do the tap tap method. I do not drag, I tap tap, pick up a bead, and I place it on the nail. You see how the bead is flowing, but not too much? I'm going to pat it down. I don't like to drag it too much, because if you drag too much, it will wipe off the acrylic, and we don't want to waste product. So we're going to pat drag, I like to say. That's my method, pat and drag a little bit. So we're going to make sure we're pulling it down on the sides as well as we're dragging it down. Clean up those sides. I like to make sure I'm keeping my shape as I am pulling the acrylic down the nail tip because I don't want to have to do too much filing when it is time to file again. I'm going to tuck the excess under the nail tip and using the tip of my brush, as you can see, I got it from up under the nail tip and wiped it off on the paper towel. I'm picking up my cuticle bead, placing that right up in there. I like to call this method my tucking method. So I'm tucking that bead up in the cuticle area. Don't jam it up in there. Don't shove it up in there. A nice little tuck with the top of the bristles of the brush will do, okay? I know it sounds easier said than done, but baby, I promise. Practice, 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 practice. 
after I do that, I like to take the tip of those bristles and I like to clean up that cuticle area because I want it to be nice and clean. I don't want to have to have too much over spillage in my cuticle area with acrylic because then I'm going to be stressed out when it's time to e-file it and get that stuff done. Also, y'all, when y'all are using the acid primer, please be sure not to get it on your client's skin because you will burn her. It's acid in the primer, so she can possibly have an allergic reaction. So just be mindful of that as well. Be mindful not to use too much acid primer because if it gets on that skin, it can be really, really bad and it can hurt really bad. So... Like I said before, we're just going to go ahead and do our little pet drag method. When you are laying acrylic, and I feel like a lot of people struggle with this, you are to have a very light hand. If you are heavy handed, work on not being heavy handed. And I know I can be very heavy handed, so that took me a while to understand. But laying acrylic is a very light handed thing. You cannot be heavy handed in laying acrylic because if you are, you're going to be wiping off a lot of your product and you're going to be wasting a lot of product. And... If you order nail stuff on the regular, you know how expensive acrylic and monomer can get, okay? That stuff starts to add up real quick. My cuticle beads, we want our cuticle beads to be a little bit on the drier side because we don't want it running everywhere. As you can see, you see I'm getting up in those corners. You see how I'm tucking and now I'm dragging it down, okay? Follow me. Getting up in that corner right there, making sure that cuticle is clean and we're dragging it down. Taking the tip of the bristles getting up in that cuticle on the other side oh my hand's covering but I was cleaning up top of those bristles cleaning up the sides of that nail if you are struggling with your acrylic application take your time you will get better at it practice 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 you're not going to get it overnight and to the people that do <laughs> kudos to you because baby when I say it took me a long time to finally get my acrylic application under control I've been doing nails for five years in the first year of me doing nails my acrylic application was trash garbage <laughs> literally <laughs> so trust me don't feel discouraged if you feel like you're not understanding it fast enough take your time okay you're not going to get it overnight you might be looking at other nail texts you're like, oh my gosh, her application is so nice and I wish my nails looked like hers. Trust me when I say this, Wookie, her nails didn't always look like that. They weren't always nice. She started at the bottom too. We all did. So take your time. Don't feel discouraged. Don't get anxious. Don't get worried. Practice, 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 practice. People always ask me like, oh, how did I learn how to do nails? YouTube. That's why I'm making YouTube videos now because... I was that I was that nail tech before. I was getting on YouTube all day, all night, watching tutorials on how to do nails. If I'm a I'm a visual learner, I'm a visual learner. So if I see something, I'll pick up on it easily. I just have to watch it a million and one times. Watching YouTube videos will literally help you so much with your application designs and all that stuff now i'm not gonna lie to you when it comes to sanitation and stuff like that go to school get that nail tech license okay boo don't don't skip on the school part still go to school because you need to learn sanitation i mean you can learn sanitation through youtube don't get me wrong but you need your nail tech license so still go to school learn your sanitation learn your different diseases and disorders learn um just learn everything you need to know to take that state board and pass that state board test because you need to know those things so you can conduct your business properly and on the cleanly this side okay so we already appreciate the nails before we laid the acrylic so now i'm going to go in with my 8080 grit hand file once again and i'm going to tighten the shape up you see how i still kind of have the shape even after i laid the acrylic that means I don't have to go in and shape as hard as I would have to because I did a good job laying my acrylic.
Now I'm going in with my Melody Suzy Extra Long Medium Grit Carbide Bit. I love this bit. Like, I fell in love with this bit so hard. It's my favorite bit. I use it damn near like four or five times a day. Baby, when I say this grit, this grit, this bit is my favorite bit ever. I love how long it is because I do a lot of extra long nails, but I use it on my medium nails and short nails as well. I just feel like it gets the job done and you're saving so much time because it is extra long so you're making contact area you're making contact with the whole entire nail with the bit so you don't have to keep going up and down the nail as much because the bit is long enough to do the whole entire nail now i will say this if you are a beginner do not order this bit this bit is for people who have been doing nails for a long time and they have mastered using their e-files now, if you're a beginner and you still want to order it, do so at your own risk. But I will suggest do not use it on a client. Use it on yourself first so you can understand how to use it. That way, if you end up cutting, you're cutting yourself and not your client. So practice using this bit on yourself first because this bit can get real dangerous real fast. Have I ever... I, I this, this bit can get dangerous, okay? <laughs> I've cut my own self with this bit and baby when I say it hurt it hurt so definitely practice before you use it on somebody else because yeah <laughs> All right, so once we have finished filing and shaping our nails with our e-file and our hand file, I'm just going to dust away all of that excess dust. As you can see, I got a lot of dust going on. I'm always dusty during nails. Like, it never fails. After I'm done dusting away all the extra dust, I'm going to go ahead and buff her nails. I don't, ha <clears throat> I don't have a preference on what type of buffer I use. I'll use any buffer. I don't care. A buffer is a buffer to me. I know there is different grit buffers, but I don't really care. A buffer is a buffer and I'm going to buff. So as you're buffing, you want to make sure that the soft side of the buffer is facing the cuticle area because you don't want the grit side facing the cuticle and then you scratch up her cuticle area. It's going to hurt really bad. So as you're buffing, make sure that the soft side is facing the cuticle area. That way, if the buffer does touch the skin, it's not going to hurt because you're facing the cuticle area. As you can see, I turned the buffer around. I used the side with the grit facing the cuticle. I've been doing nails for a while, so I kind of know what I'm doing. I know not to get too close to the cuticle when I am using that side. But for beginners, I always recommend make sure you use the soft side towards the buffer. Like I said, my client is not getting no designs, so we're going to go ahead and top coat her, and she's good to go. She's ready to hop out the chair and walk out the door, okay? I'm using my Koopa top coat. I've been using this top coat, I want to say, for a year now. Before, I was using the IBD uh, UV LED gel top coat, but then I switched over to the Koopa. I really like Koopa because I like that it's not as thick as the uh, IBD UV LED gel top coat and yeah, don't get me wrong i used to live by ivd that was my girl but i love koopa koopa top coat is my girl now i really really love her but yes you guys this is the finished result thank you for watching thank you for staying tuned i will list everything that i use down below if you guys have any comments any questions any suggestions on any videos y'all want me to record let me know um and yeah Thank you for watching. Make sure you thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. And yeah, I will catch y'all in my next video.